Hello, my name is Marion Penna, and I'm from Seems to Be So. I'm here with you today because this is the third day, third time for me to participate in Bees EQ Applicate Animals Blog Hop. That is so hard to say. <laughs> I, I, I've just had a problem with it every time I say it. It's very, it's like it's like one of those little riddles, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, kind of thing. Anyway, um, today I I I didn't want to do a third animal, but I got to thinking about what the um, techniques I've done so far and. Well, I had planned to do a flower. We already have several beautiful flowers in this blog hop. And because the techniques are basically the same, because the caterpillar and I'm I'm gonna have to edit that edit that out, I apologize. Um because the caterpillar and the bee are basically the same using mostly the bazaar curve. Um, I decided I wanted to do a block where I concentrated more on using shapes. So I'm going to do a butterfly today. So um, even though mine is supposed to be summer stuff, I guess a butterfly fits into summer stuff and when you think about it my caterpillar started out on Monday you know and it's kind of just creeped along and grown over the course of the few days and today it will become a butterfly so that's where we are with bees blog hop okay so now we'll go to electric quilt and I will click on close for the tip of the day and um, the other thing I thought I would concentrate on um, today I was trying to put together a project from my blocks that I have created for this blog hop because I wanted to be able to show you things you could do with the different blocks but um, as I was trying and getting very frustrated over the fact that I could not make a project out of these blocks without that background fabric showing up on the applique blocks I'd made I, I, I just you know ended up looking all day on the web trying to find out what I'm doing wrong I, I've even searched my books and um, I finally found something that kind of explains it but doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me but apparently when you make a block and an applique block in particular in electric quilt it automatically sets the background when you go to the color tab whether you've added a background or not that cream colored background is meant to have a fabric added to it which I, I've never bothered to do um, simply because I never thought about it in those terms but now I think about those templates and how it's you know given you the six inch block to work with I realized that you know it's giving you your block to cut out with for your background fabric so um, and that's all good for um, just a block but if you're planning to put it into a project you actually have to do something slightly different and you don't make a block instead you make a motif and so that's what I'm going to start out with today I'm just gonna do the motif instead of a block and then hopefully I will remember to show you how to convert that even into a block at the end of the lesson so anyway we're going to start out with our butterfly and I am going to name this with motif so that I know this is my motif pattern down the road for this block. Now you don't have to when you uh, I should say that if you've made blocks you can easily convert them with the copy and paste functions in electric quilt and vice versa if you have a motif already you can convert it to a block so just because I'm showing you how to draw today 
I'm doing I'm going to do this in the motif um, method versus the normal applique method so um, we want to come here to block and normally when you choose a patch draw block you get these four tabs down here at the bottom tracing paste applique and color but if you come if you're going to draw, draw a, a motif a patch draw motif in particular you're only going to get three I so wish I'd known this because that piece tab always bugs the heck out of me I'm like why is it there why is it there I don't need it you know <laughs> so um, but I, you know I mean it's not like electric quilt, quilt can read my mind either and know whether I'm doing a piece or an applique block so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our image in and um, this is the flower as you can see it's pretty much the zero curves all the way um, the only thing with the flower that I really would have concentrated on was the stitch order and um, just briefly on that I'll say that the stitch the, the first flower petal we would have done was this one because it's underneath both and when you stitch it out you'll start here you'll come over this way not doing this block then you'll come over this way and finishing with this block and that's really the most important thing to know about the flower otherwise everything else pretty much goes into place so <clears throat> here we have our butterfly and I'm choosing JPEG file again and here are the other blocks this is what I'm trying to create is this little project file but I want to add the grass to it so now you can see all the blocks that you're getting with this project and that's why you want to stitch them out and send them to me so that you'll be able to get this project along with all the other blocks that I created for this blog hop maybe hopefully you'll be excited and only the people in the video who watch the video get to know about this so okay <laughs> okay so here we have our butterfly we're going to bring it in and um, I'm going to crop this down just a little bit because I don't really need all this here and um, as I have said before I don't really see any differences here when I work with this the only time I would see it is as, as if I had set it to a, a number and I come down and I click OK then I would see the difference but I like to see the difference as I'm making that change so now I will click OK and you just place it anywhere and you can lighten up your block a little bit or you can make it darker and I just said that the opposite way this is lighter and then lower numbers are darker so I like mine a little bit light because I actually want to see um, what I'm drawing and I can do that better if I make this just a little bit lighter okay so once I have this in place I'm now going to go to my applique tab and you see here our shapes all show up today we're mainly going to work with the shapes I actually cannot think of a single thing except perhaps the body here that we're going to just quickly use the berserk curve for but really I could just draw an oval and then use the berserk curve to come in here and then edit these but it's faster to use the Bezier curve and that's that's the only place that we're actually going to use the Bezier curve at okay so um, we want to think about our stitching order obviously our wings are going to be done first okay so we're going to concentrate on those then we're going to put our body together and then the head and that's our main parts and I always like to get the main parts of anything done first everything else is additional such as the eyes and the hearts here they're just additional parts of the block that help make it pretty so um, I'm going to take and choose the heart and remember that by pressing on the icon here it will give you the flyout menu 
Now, a heart is going to start out like this when you draw it. And so that means you're going to have to rotate it slightly. This, this to me is always interesting <laughs> because I, I have a hard time with this. I always try to, I want to. I don't think I want that tool, do I? I'm going to want this one. Then we click on the red square here to get our little pop-up window to show up, which allows us to rotate, flip, and that kind of thing. Rotating for me here is a little hard, so I might end up doing a few control Z's until I get it right. There is another one um, where you can rotate here on your right-click menu, and this one gives you an actual degrees of instead of these, where these are just set numbers. Um, I'm wanting my point to end up more on this kind of slant, so I'm going to try just a 45 degree. For, it's not quite enough. There should be a, a rotate button up here, wouldn't you think? Well, no, I guess not. Um, I do like to just choose my own little and maybe one more here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We can pretty much leave this be because as we bring this out a little bit more, it will shape into place. So we can set that aside. We don't really need it. Well, yes, we do. We need to flip it <laughs> on the horizontal so that I, I, for some reason, just want to start on the left side. So we'll kind of bring up this heart about as far as we can to fit into the butterfly wings. Okay. From here, it's just going to be quite a bit of editing to get it to fit into place. But, um... Remember I told you in other videos that um, when you're editing and you, you're first, when you first start out, you're going to get these two handles, and you get those by whatever side you click on. If you click on the top or the left side, these, the upper two, will show up. If you click down here, they show up facing down this way. We immediately want to start adding some nodes here. So while I could come up here to the toolbar and add nodes, I can also click on my red shape and add nodes as well. So um, I'm going to pull this up into place. I know I need this bit over here. And I'm just going to try and shape this with as few nodes as possible, but I will have to add quite a few nodes to get it to work anyway. So as you can see here, we now have these two sections, and I clicked here, and it brings up handles for the this just this area here. So I'm going to pull this over, and that's that's not too bad actually. Okay, so um, now I'm going to click over here. And I'm going to choose Add on my menu bar. I'm going to try and work this in. I'm not so um, set on getting these all lined up um, properly because they are the outer wings. And um, as long as the size is pretty much OK, it's really not a big deal to me. So I'm not going to worry too much about all the editing that's going to go on. Okay, so now I'll work quickly on this side. I'm going to add a node. Then I'm going to oh, grab the handle there.
In my next video, I plan to talk to you about the various options that you can use when um, working with patch draw. Um, because there are snap options and there are um, coloring your nodes options and that kind of thing. Like if you have bad eyes like I do, I really should change my colors because um, I, I do prefer um, pink. Now I don't have as many nodes in this one, I don't know why, but I'm just going to add one more in here to get this to work out. Okay, so the next thing we know we're going to need to do is we're going to have to edit this in here. So we want to try and have a node that's up near here. And I could have just added one, please don't think I couldn't do that because I could have just added a node and not worried about it too much. But really, you should try to use as few nodes as possible as well. So um, I'm still going to have nodes because I'll have to add quite a few in here to get this shape. So um, I am going to go ahead and sometimes you can just tell if you're going to be able to work a node in there or not. And I just don't think well, I don't know. Let's see if I can do this well enough. I guess I can shape this okay. That's good because then I don't have to add another node here. Okay, so I have these as close to this edge as I as I think I'm comfortable with. You don't need to have a big overlay because Electric Quilt is going to add the seam allowances for you. So, and because this is underneath, we don't need to have a really big um, overlap as well because you can kind of control that having all that seam allowance there as well. So, it's really up to you on what you decide to do. So, I am trying not to add a lot of overlap. Because the more overlap you have, of course, the more seam allowance you're going to have as well. So, so now I'm just shaping these by taking and pressing. Um, for a node when I need it, using my handles to help shape the area a little bit. This looks pretty good. Um, it's really hard, in my opinion, to get little curves like this done perfectly, but you just you're just doing the best you can. Okay, so we're gonna add a node in there. Just add, and I'm going to zoom a little bit here so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, just call me nutty. I <laughs> just get weird sometimes about that kind of stuff. I'm going to add a node here. Sometimes when you're adjusting this area up here because it affects this node, it will come back in here and you'll have to make a slight adjustment. Okay, so we pretty much have that shaped and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to come to my pick tool and I'm going to highlight this. And instead of having to make another heart, I'm just going to flip it horizontally. Oh, I want to clone it first, I apologize. And I'm going to flip it horizontally, and bring it into place. Now it's not going to fit perfectly, but it's not going to need a lot of editing and I can pretty much get away with the editing um, with what I already have. 
So I'm just going to quickly do that and I will come back to you when that's finished. Okay, I have finished editing the hearts and I wanted to um, tell you that I did just go around and polish these a little bit more. What I did is when you zoom in, you really get to see how far off you really are and such. And I did come through and edit these so that they are a little bit closer to the lines. I just, um, I, I know from stitching these out that I had way too much overlap, so I don't want to make that mistake again. And really when you um, are doing your own appliques, you know how much you need. And if you have a proper template, that's really what you want in the first place. So I, I want my designs to be as accurate as possible. So that it's easier for you to stitch out and easier for me to stitch out. So um, there you go on that. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that it's okay to be off the line a little bit, but you do want to be as close as you can, especially because this these images have really thick lines in the first place. Okay, so the next one, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start on the body. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to use Berserk Curves in here. So we'll come up here to our Berserk Curve tool. I am going to zoom in so that you can see this better. And I just need to make sure I stay with at the outside of these lines. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this so that this body is the bottom and then we'll come and do these as our last options. Okay, so uh, when I um, do the berserk curve, I tend to try and make as many nodes as possible, but because this is such a small area, I won't need a lot of nodes. I'm going to make one here and I'm going to come here. Um, I believe I remember telling you about how with the berserk curve, you need to make sure that you get it closed. If you don't close it, you just leave it be. It's just going to act like a normal stitch out. Now, as you can see, it has pretty much snapped into place here. I didn't ask it to snap into place, and I don't have my settings set for it to set, snap in place. <coughs> I don't want them to snap in place on purpose because I want to be able to show you what happens if it doesn't line up. So you come up here to your shadow tool and actually you can see it has filled in okay. So we're pretty good there. And so we're just going to edit this. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to actually come in a little bit closer so I can get a good, accurate first run. And you just edit this down to the line. You can kind of drag the line around with your mouse. That's kind of a cool little trick. And try to, um, when it's showing a curve, try to make sure you're getting a curve because it's real easy to see how this could become a straight line. Like this just looks too straight to me. You know, so I want to go back and try and get that in a curved manner even if I have to come out here, but to get it, I still want a slight curve in here. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I know I've gone into the line here, but I just prefer it have that little curve. Okay, pretty easy to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one up here. When I come down to the bottom, I will come back and um, talk to you a little bit more about that. Okay? So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. As you can see, I have finished the top part of the body. I just came around 
and shaped my bizarre curve around each area. I added a few extra nodes up in here to try and get this curve to go in shape, and I'm going to just edit this one here a little bit to get a better curve. I think because I didn't put enough nodes in here in the first place, that's why I'm having so many little problems with the curves. There it is. Okay. Okay. I'm happy with that. I think that works out okay. Okay, so we want to come down here to the bottom part of the body. And um, I thought about looking to see if I could find a shape that might work well for this. And I thought about using the teardrop. And you could possibly use even the oval shape. Um, I'm going to try using the um, oval, even though I, I know it's probably the wrong choice. Just because I want to do something different, and I really want to concentrate on doing something more with shapes. So you just start out, and you draw your little oval shape. And really, this is not going to be that hard to edit. You're just going to have to swing it way over here to get it to work out for the top. Actually, I'm not going to get that. Let's see if there's a better oval in here. No, there just really isn't, is there? Okay, we'll just use the bizarre curve really quick. Okay, so we're going to come up here and um, start out using our curve. And I am going to put quite a few nodes in, so I'll be able to shape those um, circles, curves, a little bit easier. I want to try and keep as little nodes in here as possible because it's a pretty sharp curve and you don't want to point right on that bottom because you'll end up having the problems I had with what happened in here getting it to be straight. So you want to try and get that curve on the bottom there because it is such a sharp curve. So it's pretty okay. It's pretty easy to just stop and restart. Okay, I'm not sure that this is filled in, and it's not filled in. I obviously have a problem somewhere. So let's see. Oops. It's not here. So any obvious places? Up oh, there we go. It just kind of hover over it until it snaps into place. Okay, so we'll come up here and we're going to just be really close so I can get this worked out real quick. Because this is on the top, it's important to get this right because this is going to be on the top of this middle of this body. Just like this one up here, it's important to have this right on the curve here because it's going to be sitting when you stitch it out on top of this part, the middle part of this body. So that's why I get a little picky sometimes because I, you have to think about those things when you are designing an applique and how it's going to be. It's like you know, a, a pieced block where you might have an inset seam, it's important to make sure you get those cut out properly so that you can line them up properly on that quarter inch point. I'm not a fan of inset seams, but you know, <clears throat> what can I say? We all have to do them at some point. Just going to continue working around the curves. I 
I guess I could tell you about um, how I came to love applique so much. I remember when I first started quilting, I thought, I will never make an applique quilt. They're just not even something I could fall in love with. But then I learned how to machine quilt from Harriet Hargrave, and I um, was pretty excited about machine quilting and thought, you know, how cool is that? And um, about, oh, I guess it was a year later or so, she was, I guess she was just coming out with her applique book, and I thought, oh, I didn't realize you could machine applique with your sewing machine, or you could applique with your sewing machine, and um, so I took that class. I, I even got to be her assistant once at a, a quilt show where they do classes and such, big quilt show in Virginia, and um, it was pretty exciting to be her assistant for those few days because I learned way more than I ever thought I would, and I got to know her and how nice she really is. She's just really great. I, I, I really admire her. So, um, anyway, I guess it was about six months later or so, after taking that class, I was um, pretty excited about trying to find some applique designs that I would um, want to do, and um, I love Baltimore album quilts. I think they're really pretty, but I thought, you know, they're so intricate. I just can't imagine being able to do one, and because I love embellishment, I'd, I would definitely want to embellish it. And just getting off the subject here for a second, um, I have finished the bottom section of this body, and so I am going to move on to the head, and he's just, and it's just going to be an oval shape, a circle, I guess I could say. So anyway, um, I took a class at a quilt shop in Fairfax, and um, that's in Virginia, and. Um, it was by Mimi Dietrich, and wow, it was when she just first came out with her book, her, her book, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it was on Baltimore flowers, and um, I asked her in that class if she would m mind if I machine applique and did some embellishing with the blocks, and that's when she told me that, you know, I was free to do what I liked, and she would love to see what I did, and that kind of thing, and um, eventually I did do a wall hanging in, with her blocks, and um, I gave it away as a wedding gift a long time ago, so I intend to do more of those. I've done a lot more applique since that time, but um, my next applique experience was not so great, so, I mean, I loved mine, and I loved, it was a round robin, but that's where the, I get my hatred of fusible applique, applique from, so we won't go into that. <laughs> Let's just su suffice it to say I took that, that wall hanging apart. Okay, so I have my eyes in, just little oval shapes, and I could have cloned this eye and um, moved it over here, but because I was just chatting on about my applique experiences in life, um, I just kind of did it. So next we're going to do the heart. We're definitely going to clone these because of the way the heart shapes out in the first place. So um, we're going to rotate, go to our pick tool, click on our heart, and rotate. I'm going to try 45 degrees again. I'm not happy with that. Um, I wonder if you can rotate at a smaller degrees. Oh, wrong way. So, oh, this is weird, huh? <laughs> Now that I've screwed it up, let's see here. Um, we'll try 120. 
Oh, almost. I could have just flipped that if I could get that right. Um, 150. Okay, well, this is not working for me the way I want it to. to. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to try these. See if I can get this. Okay, I'm going to try a 45 degree angle on this. And if that doesn't work, then I will just shape it in place. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, finally got there. So, just by a little experimentation, <laughs> you'll, want, you'll eventually get there. And maybe, who knows, maybe you're better at math than I will, and you'll know exactly which one you should choose. So now we're going to shape this into place, and we want to try and get the size pretty much right off the bat so that we can shape it easily. I'm going to come in here really close and shape this really fast. I'm going to add some nodes. Turn my little menu on. I can bring this up here and get this shaped. this because this video is already really long. But I don't know, I just kind of like, when I watch videos, I kind of like to see the whole thing, you know, because you never know what someone's going to do. And that's why I'm, I, I'm pretty much only going to do video lessons for my tutorials, whatever I put on my blog, because I really like video lessons. So I like being able to see it versus not being able to see it. Um, pictures are great. You know, there are times like I don't have a camera in my home, so if I have to show how to sew something, I am going to have to do a lot of pictures. But even still, I know how to put them in a video. So, <laughs> so they would still go into a moving image. But the reason why I like video is because you can stop and start, stop and start with a PDF file or let's say a blog page of images, and this is not to put down tutorials on the web, because I have learned way, 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 way more on just, you know, um, image tutorials than I have video tutorials, but um, it's, you always have to try and find where you were, so that's why I like video tutorials, because when I want to stop, I can just stop and do what she's done and then come back and restart it. And that's why I like them better. Okay. Um, I want to make sure I get this right because I'm going to be cloning this and I don't want to have to reshape them. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to um, come over to my color tab just for a sec because I can see much better the shaping. I think this needs a little bit of work, but um, I'm going to work on that real quick and then I'll be right back. It is amazing how fast the time goes by when you're doing these videos. We're already 39 minutes into this video, so like, wow. Okay, I'm going to clone this heart. I don't know why I zoomed in. And I'm going to add one over here. I'm going to clone it again. Add one over here. And I'm going to clone it again. And add this one. And these all should be perfect. They really don't need any editing. 
Okay, so here we are with our butterfly. Next, we're just going to give him a little bit of color. And can you see here how there's no background fabric? And that's because this is a motif and not an actual um, quilt block. So um, let us find some fun colors for our butterfly. Uh, she had uh, in her image, she had them um, pink, but I don't know. I just don't want to get it too dark, you know. So, I don't know. What do you think? colors. I kind of want to go with green. I know a green butterfly. You're thinking, what is that girl thinking? But I kind of like that. It's a little bit too much green. Well, let's have a reminder of our caterpillar. What do you think? Green eyes have to go, don't you think? Okay, that's not too bad. It's hard to color. I'm not good at this kind of stuff. I, I'd be better if I had actual fabrics in my hand. And you know, I didn't save a single part of this to my sketch pad. That's very, very bad of me. So. It's not going to show up in blocks because it's a motif. Okay, so um, I'm going to close off this video because we are at 42 minutes now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just restart another video and I'm going to show you how to convert this motif to a block in, in case you want to stitch it out on its own. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back with you, and um, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.